This is Musings of the Shy podcast. I'm your host, Rosia Shy. Hello, Rosia Shy here with another episode of Musings of the Shy podcast. On this episode, uh, episode 152, I will ABC, as easy as 1, 2, 3, ABC, 1, 2, 3. I want to talk about Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin ABC. Um, kind of get in more in depth about it, what's going on with it. Uh, reading some articles about the process. Apparently, things are going to kick off August first. So, kind of have discussed it um, about the forking and the user activated soft fork. Uh, next e- episode, we're going to talk about just the timeline of the the activation progress. Uh, progress, if you will, of Segwit with the you know BIP ninety one, and we get to BIP one forty one, and how BIP four hundred forty eight somewhere in there um, before the actual you know uh, August first date. But before we get into the discussion about um, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin slash Bitcoin ABC, the news, the news. This is from The Verge. Um, Defcon has been going on, and by the time this gets up, uh, it's probably already been done. But here's a funny little bit. Uh, the UPS store stops printing from URLs and USB sticks ahead of DEF CON hacking convention. They'll be printing from attachments only. So the UP, UPS store at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas has stopped print, printing services for the hotel guests who will offer up a file on a USB or a VO link, reports security news site CSO. The extra precaution comes ahead of the DEF CON hacking convention, which is head at the Fame Casino from the July 27th to the 30th. Uh, due to the DEF CON hacking convention, we'll be accepting email print jobs with attachments only. We will not accept USB prints or any links. We apologize for the inconvenience. Uh, thousands of computer hackers head to Las Vegas each year for DEF CON and Black Hat, which are back-to-back information security conventions, and attendees are often warned to take extra precaution over, over their online security. This, they, these can be little steps such as not sending passwords over Wi-Fi or using APMs due to a surge in digital mischief making. Uh, and then the article kind of goes on, but I just found that very fascinating and uh, an interesting story and kind of a little bit lighthearted, if you will. So here's a, some very big news. Um, Adobe News, Flash and the Future of Interactive Content. Uh, Adobe has long been long played a leadership role in advancing interactivity and creative content from video to games and more on the web. Where we've seen a need to push content and interactivity forward, we've innovated to meet the, those needs. Where a format doesn't exist, we invent one, such as with Flash and Shockwave. And over time, as the web evolved, these new formats were adopted by the community, in some cases, formed the basis for open standards and became an essential part of the web. But as open standards as like HTML, uh, HTML5, uh, WebGL, and WebAssembly have matured over the past several years, most now provide many of the capabilities and functionalities that plugins pioneered and have become a viable alternative for the content on the web. Over time, we've seen helper apps, apps evolve to become plugins, and most recently, we see many of these plugins capabilities get incorporated into open web standards. Today, most uh, browser vendors are integrating capabilities once provided by plugins directly into the browser and uh, depreciating plugins. Given the progress and the collaboration with several other technology partners, including Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla, Adobe is planning to end the end of life flash. Specifically, we will stop updating the server in the Flash player at the end of 2020 and encourage content creators to migrate any existing Flash content to these new open formats. Several industries and businesses have built around Flash technology, including gaming, education, and video, and remain committed to supporting Flash through 2020. As customers and partners put their migration plans into place, Adobe will continue to support Flash on a number of major OSs and browsers that currently support Flash content through the planned uh, EOL. This will include issuing regular security patches, maintaining OS and browser capability, adding features and temp- capability as needed. We remain fully committed to working with partners including Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla to maintain the security and compatibility of Flash content. To see each partner's announcement on this news, click on the links inside each partner's name. In addition, we plan to move more aggressively to EOL Flash in certain geographic, geographic geographies where unlicensed and outdated versions of Flash Player are being distributed. Adobe will also remain at the forefront of leading the develop- development of the new web standards and actively participating in their advancement. This includes continuing to continue to be HTML5 standard and participating in the WebAssembly community group. And we will continue to provide the best in class animation video tools such as Animate CC as the premier web animation tool for developing HTML content and Premiere Pro CC. 
Looking ahead, Adobe will continue to provide the best tools and services for designers and developers to create amazing content for the web. Uh, so, wow. So, Flash is ending. Um, when it worked, I liked it. When it didn't, I hated it. It's, it's kind of time for Flash to end. Um, we need to go into other forms of content. You know, at times, Flash was so goddamn annoying and buggy and crashing, but I, I'm kind of glad that it's ending. Uh, hopefully, there's been a call for it to be open source so people can work on it and maybe make some changes. Changes and because there there could be some still functionality from uh, Flash, particularly on mobile devices, and within the world where the internet infrastructure is not as strong as it is um, in the Western world. But we'll see. Major tech companies see DNA storage as the future. Uh, this is from Digital Journal by Tim Sandel. Major technology companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft are investing in the use of DNA to store vast quantities of digitized data. Such data storage solutions will be retrievable thousands of years later. Uh, DNA is a universal fundamental data storage mechanism in biology, and this highly evolved mechanism can be used to hold other forms of data too. By converting data into base form, the stored data on a DNA, different scientific approaches are being considered. These are processed to store digital data in the base sequence of DNA. Some approaches involve the use of natural DNA in living organisms, such as bacteria, whereas other researchers are embarking on a synthesized route. An overview of scientific pro progress was recently published in the Digital Journal. DNA has a data density in order of magnitude far higher than any conventional storage system. Here, just one gram DNA will be able to represent close to 1 billion terabytes or 1 zettabyte of data. I didn't even know that that was a representation, that we were getting to that point. That they've already labeled that Z zettabyte for a billion terabytes. That's <sighs> DNA is also robust. Information can be retrieved thousands of years later, and DNA samples can be well preserved by freezing. As well as different means of storage, some researchers are also considering people are living storage vehicles carrying tiny fragments of data encoded in DNA with them. It's kind of part of the pot line of uh, that god awful Superman movie, Man of Steel. Uh, several technology firms are exploring the use of DNA storage. This takes the form of, of big players like uh, Google Genomics, working with biotech startups as have uh, Apple. Perhaps the biggest progress based on the industry reports is coming from Microsoft. Microsoft is reported by 10 million streams of DNA from the biological startup company Twist Bioscience. This is to investigate the use of genetic material stored to data. Uh, Twist Bioscience has the ability to produce custom strings of DNA. These are sold to research laboratories so the code can be inserted. As Twist Bioscience states, this is a nod towards the future. The technology challenges facing these, those inventing in the emerging field are the costs of the process of writing and reading the information. Uh, Twist Bioscience has made considerable advances with the writing process. The reading part requires genetic sequence technology, and good progress is being made. And according to the Microsoft researcher Doug Karam, the scientist told Ted Crunch, the initial test phase with Twist demonstrated that we can encode and recover 100% of the digital data from synthetic DNA. So people can literally be walking around with digital data information, kind of, instead of having a hard drive in your head like Johnny Mnemonic style, you basically, maybe a portion or under a fingernail, might have encoded a bacteria, if you will, with data information. Uh, wow, that's, I can see all sorts of kind of, um, useful purposes as well as malicious purposes for that type of technology. Uh, but we'll see how it progress. Um, and that is it for the news. We're going to talk a little bit more in depth about uh, Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin ABC. So let's get into it. So here we go. Uh, this is from Bitcoin Magazine. I'm not going to read the entire article. It's written by Anne, and it's an interview with Ami Sheets, who is responsible for developing Bitcoin. So the, the future of, quote unquote, quote, unquote, Bitcoin Cash, an interview with Bitcoin APC new developer, Army Sheet. Though, according to plan, August 1st, we'll see a launch of the new cryptocurrency described as an airdrop off coin, a spin off coin, or a fork coin, or a coin coin, or as people behind the project call it, a new version of Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash, AP, CC, I'm not sure that's going to be the same um, acronym, considering that BitConnect has that as um, the changes, but we'll see. And anyone who holds BTC on this day at 1220 BTC capacity will automatically receive the equivalent amount of BTC attributed to the Bitcoin project keys. Bitcoin Cash is the realization of the user activated fund for UHF that, has, that was first announced at Bitmain's CC Plan Case and Chain Select 
supplied by the Big 148 and drafted in soft water. Although the mining hardware producer has sent out mixed signals about the project since. A first software implementation of the Bitcoin Cash Protocol called Bitcoin ABC was recently revealed by the developer Army, uh, Dedelnet Schmidt, at the future of Bitcoin conference in Army, the Netherlands. Schmidt's work has faced up the past year to decide to focus on Bitcoin for the time of the year. So, anyone in favor of increasing the block size could have forked off for years now. What took you so long? Well, I wasn't expecting the whole situation to last this long. Bitcoin Classic seemed to get a lot of traction last year, and then the Hong Kong Roundtable took this attack. So, it seemed like things were working well enough for a while. This year, I started to do research on scaling solutions for the Bitcoin itself, at first focusing on inclusion blocks. Uh, Bitcoin ABC was initially based on efforts used to build various experiments in Hong Kong. I was later contacted by a free trader, a developer on the BTC fork server, who wanted to implement adjustable block size moment on top of Bitcoin ABC. Then the whole UAF plan was proposed by Bitme, and the free trader and I both thought it was a good idea, so we went with it. Uh, what is your relationship with Bitme, and are they funding? I got a sponsor from the Bitcoin Development Grant to do my scaling research. It was mostly thanks to other research I've done prior. My plan is to work on Bitcoin ABC specifically, but I was not really in it enough at some point in time to can't predict where things are going to go. So he was already working on this, and eventually, I guess, maybe this was something that was in another protocol solution, either a projection of Bitcoin ABC Classic or Bitcoin ABC Lena, to be looking at the same block. But then I guess you could say he got tapped to do this. Uh, the Bitcoin 48 US UASX seems to have been made obsolete by Bit91. Why is the UASX so happy? The Bitcoin 48 was made obsolete only because it declared very recently. Uncertainly remained remain even after Segway 2X. The scaling proposal based on the New York Agreement and backed by a number of Bitcoin companies and mining firms. Uh, depending on how fast miners were adopted, the UAS, UASX could happen or not. So we continue to push forward with the UASX. UAHS. By the time it was known that the UASS wouldn't happen, it was also very clear that there's, there was a strong market demand for a UHS anyway. What made it clear to you? A lot of people contacted us and wanted to, to launch Bitcoin Cash. Random people are also company miners are perhaps well known in the global space. All the above. But I don't wish to mention anyone specifically. Someone like BPPC and OKCoin okay, has gone public. If others want to do that, they'll have to do it themselves. So BPPC is one of the main exchanges that spearheaded it. Is that the only one? There's Kraken. There's a whole litany of different places that are willing to integrate Bitcoin uh, cash in the system. Coinbase, on the other hand, um, has rejected it and decided not to. Um, I'm going to read two more from those questions, and then um, actually three more, and then we're going to go on to other points. Uh, so, more to the point Bitcoin cash will remove Sega the business, and we'll have a default box size of 8 megabytes. Why 8, not 2, or so narrow? This is a judgment call there. 8 megabytes is large enough to make sure we have a mechanism to adjust it by the time we get anywhere close to the limit. On the other hand, we don't want to go unlimited cowboy style. With the size of the block growth, there's a lot of work to be done to ensure that they keep being process efficient. What if 8 megabytes fill up very fast? It seems evident that the Bitcoin network endured a lot of spam over the past year. For example, that could happen again. It could, in it could increase the block size to 8 megabytes is not a simple solution to this. But it's an improvement. At least it, 8 megabytes would be more expensive to keep intact on. It would be even more expensive to spam blocks full of 16 megabytes, yet you won't increase the box to 16 megabytes with 8 megabytes there and you can quickly. I think most people are going to use the default setting at first so that it's 8 megabytes. After this fork is behind us, we'll make sure to deploy some mechanism to handle block size so we don't need to place as a, need to place as a planner. What kind of mechanism would that be? Uh, BIP 100 or any other, other mini tools is under uh, Bit 100 has control of the box size of the miners, which is also controversial. Do you think it will be hard to get everyone to agree on a solution? I think people will come to an agreement. The reason there's a split now is because people have different ideas of where they want Bitcoin to go. Once blocks on Bitcoin cash fill up, people will start wanting to go to the same place. So I'm confident they'll stay at the same point. And then he kind of goes a little bit on. Uh, but he's a developer who started out in one place and ended up being brought in on this project. And because of that, Developed the, the software protocol, which is called Bitcoin ABC. So, speaking of BitBPC, uh, this is uh, from Brave Bitcoin. Uh, EA BPC plans to launch Bitcoin alternative Bitcoin Cash on August 1st. So, much like Ethereum's July 2016 split into ETH and ETC Classic, Bitcoin 
appears to be unable to avoid having a pair of currencies with an ideological nose opponents behind either one. For much of the last week, Bitcoin has been focused on and at times celebrated the activation of a rare and important scaling document called Bitcoin 91. The hard part system upgrade has begun the process of sampling activation. Initially, we relayed the appearance of a hard fork that will lead to two competing versions of Bitcoin. <laughs> at roughly the same time, however, the quiet launch of a Bitcoin clone without SegWit has been announced by the Chinese Bitcoin exchange and mining pool, PEBTC. The company runs a top 10 Bitcoin mining pool and one of the newest Bitcoin exchanges. Uh, the EPB says that they will fork Bitcoin in a little over one week's time, creating a spin off cryptocurrency called Bitcoin Cash. This fork is based on the idea of a user activated hard fork, first proposed by Bitmain in April as a potential user for Bitcoin 48. So, Bitmain is a major investor in BTC and made a statement on Monday that it will continue supporting the segment 2x agreement. Will closely follow the BCC lead and does not rule out possibilities supporting both Segwit 2x and BCC. Uh, the first iteration of the alternate of its formation called Bitcoin ABC was proposed as a feature of Bitcoin Cash in September 2019. Two days later, on July 17th, BTC stated that their plans to create a product line and main mining pool to what they call at the time possible split coin, led by the activation of the EPB lead. The proposal split will occur in a planned hard fork on August 1st at 12.20 p.m. The Young Exchange also created a futures market for BTC token, which is only available to Chinese investors. At this time, BTC trading for what is known as roughly $424 US in the exchange. Three other exchanges are planning to join BTC to trade the currency in the split, which will be Bitcoin, OKX, Kubia, and other and one world's three one world's three largest Bitcoin exchanges by volume, South Korea's Bitcoin. So there are a lot of people getting doing both. Now, I've seen things that people have calculated that BTC will only have 4% of the option power. I don't think that is the case. I think what you will end up having is, you might end up having these exchanges, or not exchanges, the miners mining both BTC and BTC Because it would be in their economic interest to do so. I'm not sure what that would do to the hash rate if they split it enough, uh, what mining power or hash rate they put behind it. But this, this is happening. This is happening. On Tuesday, August 1st, and it's just it's mind boggling. And yeah, people are gonna get free money and free stuff like that. Uh, I don't think this chain is gonna die, I think this chain is very success, gonna be very successful. What I don't know is gonna happen is again, it's gonna be whether it actually occurs at first on August 1st at all, is what that's gonna be for the future of cryptocurrency having two different forms of Bitcoin now. And, <clears throat> kind of skipping down here, uh, while the futures market of BC coin hints at the possibility that there may be some sustainable cryptocurrency in some value, there's also an argument to be made that the Bitcoin cash is not likely to be traded in several exchanges. Blockstream chief strategy officer Samson Mao recently tweeted, any fool with a bit of hash rate can make a fourth coin. The exchanges are open to op opening up a legal can of worms by supporting them and setting the precedent. Technically, Bitcoin has been forked hundreds of times, however, Bitcoin cash will be the first hard fork of the full Bitcoin blockchain, which means that the current holders of Bitcoin will automatically have ownership of the same amount as the Bitcoin Cash on its first. The catch is that users must have access to their own Bitcoin private keys, which therefore can be held by a service like Coinbase and Chainer on Exchange. In the BC case, on August 1st, while playing BC, users will be able to use their private keys in a BC compatible wallet, assuming that they trust the wallet developers gaining access to their coin. Coinbase stated on Wednesday that the exchange will not support the new blockchain or any associated so it's going to be a race. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, we're going to continue on. There's more in the article, but I just want to touch on a, a few points there. This is from um, CoinDesk article, Bitcoin Cash, Why is the Forking of the Blockchain, What That Means? So I just want to highlight, just kind of dropping down to the why. But wait, why? There are a few reasons users and mining tools might like to break off from Bitcoin. These users want to increase the Bitcoin block size parameters and believe that cryptocurrency future depends on it. SegWit is likely going to activate soon and some users want to avoid that feature. There's a possibility that SegWit 2x block size parameter increase will ultimately fall through. The mixed ideology and technical reasons is also on display in the conversation with users. When asked by CoinDesk what Bitcoin ABC goal is, Corona responded to save Bitcoin. We want to get scale Bitcoin up so that it won't die. It's already a big bit sick and dying. And what's the difference here? Many other efforts over the last couple of years have said that it, they could 
they would split off of what they want. If they gain enough support for those operating the computers and through the network. But to date, no group has actually carried through this plan so far. Bitcoin Cash may be unique in that it actually committed to a deadline to split Bitcoin into two, and the deadline is less than a week away. Now, this article is published July 27th. If miners and users did go ahead with the split, it would mark the first time a cryptocurrency split off from Bitcoin, carrying on with this Bitcoin transaction. Like past efforts intended to replace the Bitcoin we use today with a new Bitcoin driver, Bitcoin Cash has the same goal, but seems willing to wait and see if users join the effort. Rather than calling it Bitcoin, uh, via BTC or as well as a group of Bitcoin companies from China signed an agreement to label label it a competitive currency and not the real Bitcoin. The move could set up a split to happen more quickly as the past exchanges express confusion over how the handle will work. What's next? Uh, if the new cryptocurrency splits off from the main Bitcoin network, it will mark it first, so some users are curious to see what happens. Still, without much support from miners and users, it may not end up having that much of an impact on the portion of the main network. Nonetheless, it might be worth watching in the second half of Sega 2 as it falls through. That's when you might see some more support. Kaluna, for example, concluded in an optimistic note. My secret gut feeling is that Bitcoin Cash may surprise all of us. It's not entirely possible that it will be the de facto Bitcoin after a few months. The much roomier 8 megabyte block size is back. So now I have a bunch of different articles um, concerning this. I have one article that says, you know, BTC is pairing. Um, Bitcoin uh, cash with CMY with the uh, Chinese yuan, that currency. So here's this medium article by Jonzel Kopokal. And then I'm just going to kind of give my thoughts on everything. The upcoming Bitcoin cash hard fork is great news for almost everyone. You may not be aware, but Bitcoin is working on August 1st with the UHF Bitcoin cash. So I'm kind of skipping around here. Uh, the loss of the network bet. Just like in a marriage, there should be reasons for sticking together. In Bitcoin, the main reason is called the network effect. It means that Bitcoin's advantages comes from the fact that it has the biggest number of users, merchants, developers, and investors. So I can understand why some people think it's a bad idea to have any kind of network split or fork. But sometimes reasons for breaking up are more numerous and important than the ones for sticking together. At this point, Bitcoin's network effect may be overvalued, overrated, and not put up into a full context. The rise of all forms. Bitcoin went from 95% of cryptocurrency market share to only 40% in a few short months, basically from March 2017 to June 2017. Granted, some of this is because Ethereum had been red hot, but a large part of it is because Bitcoin became unusable as a low fee payment system. That means that the user base can grow. This is one of the big reasons for that divorce. What's going to be the network effect and only the direction you go is down. Um, it has risen up, but a lot of people think it's because a lot of people are cashing out their altcoins to get as much Bitcoin as they can. So they, they can have the DC. Uh, the doors are now wide open to the users. And Segway provides a capacity increase, but it's modest. What about Segway 2x? Well, the miners be able to follow through on the 2x part of the agreement. Someone said that promise that can't be kept, and even if it is, will that be enough to scale to stay above the demand and provide a low fee transaction to everyone? The answer is happily, it doesn't matter anymore. If one chain cannot accommodate some users, the other chain will. So let's keep it all in the family. Most users will not be excited to pay high fees. Or use a second tier solution as the other low security with great friction, especially if they aren't even ready to dip. So, if users are going to use something other than the old chain Bitcoin, wouldn't it, you at least want them to use another version of Bitcoin rather than some random altcoin? The cool thing is, if you own Bitcoin, you automatically own Bitcoin Cash. That's right, small blockers are invited to be party soon. Conversely, those who embrace Bitcoin Cash will own their Bitcoins. If the Sigma chain has the majority of the hash power for now, they'll keep our Bitcoins too and see how things play out. I imagine some big blockers may be upset about the forking while that's pretty majority, but I agree with the decision of those leading the movement. We don't want segment and we don't we do want bigger blocks now. And then he talks about Ethereum. So ETH and ETC coexist police peacefully and so can we. All the non peaceful coexistence is just a bunch of nonsense trolling rhetoric. Once there's a split, the market can do its thing with price discovery and that's going to be that. No one's confused with ETH or ETC, and no one's having any issues over it. We can all stop wasting our precious energy trying to change each other's minds and let the market in reality decide. Everyone has freedom to do exactly what they want, run the code they want, use the chain they want, and again, the best part is we own both coins. You can take the risk and sell one chain, or you can hold both. It's completely up to you. So, this is going to be a relatively short episode. I just want to kind of give my personal opinion on it. I understand the ethics of wanting to fork off, um, not have a segment. Raise the block size. I'm a believer 
personally of the bigger block size. Um, I understand the need for Segwit and Lightning Network and things of that nature, but I do want the the primary option to be completely on chain. And if I choose to uh, utilize either Segwit or, or, or Lightning Network as a future option, but not as the go to method to do a low fee transaction, I'd like to be able to do the actionable thing to do and not a way to pay for something for five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, one hundred dollars, and still have uh, a savings account as some people call this one of the, the storage value option. I, I want to be able to be able to spend some money this month and then use it as I want to use it in life. You know, to be able to keep the basic necessities of the pay rent, pay uh, bills and things of that nature, which cannot be currently done with a high fee transaction. Not only that, but people don't want to be carrying around their notes and a bond note to for a a lot of people, including myself, buy into this space so that you can have nests in your bank account because economic platforms are not tied to a centralized authority. And again, when we talk about uh, consensus, we talk about uh, the fact that it wasn't made crystal clear by the first time of exactly the complete nature of Bitcoin. And maybe he thought Bitcoin could be digital cash and storage value, but right now it's there is a war going on about the nature of Bitcoin. Is it digital cash or is it storage value? Uh, I personally think it can be both. I think that's really what the vision of Satoshi Nakamoto's vision was for Bitcoin. But right now, the, the reason why we're having this war is because as a community, we haven't developed enough of the scaling options to make that future reality. Maybe that'll be something that will come through time and the Bitcoin Swartz will bring about that change. But for now, uh, the, the utility of Bitcoin is very essential important, particularly with all the shutdowns that are happening with exchanges. Um, we'll eventually talk about it. Uh, well, I never expected to do an update to the aftermath of so close, closing the dark market sites, the shutting down of USDT, uh, Mount Box Shop going on right now, the issue of uh, the spy chain being Spy, not spy chain, but uh, spy companies that are being very refined with their ability to hack Bitcoin across the public ledger. Uh, the anonymity that people seek from their currency is not within Bitcoin itself. Yes, there's Monero and yes, there's um, Dash and Zcash and Shish. Well, it used to be called Shadow Cash, but it's more popular now. Uh, other privacy. But I also think, you know, it's important that Bitcoin also has this issue because it's the first one, because it's the largest one, because it's the one with the most utility and has the most economic value. This should have a privacy component. I don't think everything I need to do or all every single transaction I do uh, needs to be knowable, if you will. All it needs to be known is that it's not a double spend. So where the map, the map that I have in my wallet, well, it's fun to look and when I see the blockchain visuals and things of that nature, I, I think it's more important to have the privacy where you don't know what is in someone's Bitcoin wallet. You don't know where exactly they're spending their Bitcoin. All you need to know is that it's not a double spend. And I think if that had been really baked in from early on into the Bitcoin protocol, I think a lot of this may have not be occurring even if Bitcoin does not, um, even if the fees were high for Bitcoin because it has that privacy component attached to it and it's so well done and it's been so widely utilized that you probably wouldn't have so much of those bigger blockers and so many bigger blockers to get going on because what, what you have is like okay well then let's focus on getting more merchants let's focus on getting more things so people would utilize bitcoin as a asset of digital currency um, built in the, the, the focus on the utility of it and then you would start going okay you should be getting a bigger block by this time of day to scan your segment option. Uh, but because I think this privacy aspect wasn't built into it, it's, it can't really be utilized really as a digital um, cash functionality, if you will, on a consistent basis. I think it also affects its fungibility and its bankability. Um, that we'll talk about um, on a Hiroshi bot level. Um, 
a little bit about the blog post that I talked about how we need to fight for the faithfulness of the faithful. And that's what it really comes down to is fungibility, faithfulness, privacy, and the ability to transact online without the feeding and the messing that some you know government issues staying away from just overall the, the current economic structure that we have in our country. Said that the Bay Cartel has such a stranglehold on us. And again, it, it, all of this, and I know I'm kind of rambling here, all of this just kind of boils down to is how did you get going? You know, your, the way to cessation we talked about in that episode. Is it digital cash or is it still in cash? We're going to see how the marketplaces play out, which one of those is going to be more successful. I think they're both going to be successful. One's going to have a higher value than the other. I think the storage value will. But I think the, the Bitcoin cash will have more users and more usability. Now, I do have some issues with the nature of how it's being implemented. There's some questions about the code and the development, um, whether or not it can be trusted. I don't think there's enough time for people to review uh, the Bitcoin ABC platform platform, if you will. Um, the fact that Bitcoin Classic and Bitcoin Unlimited, those nodes or those platforms, that code, they also add the component of Bitcoin ABC into it, and there are a few nodes out there. But I, I'm going to be, I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what happens. I may take a little bit of Bitcoin in just for experiment purposes to see, you know, what happens with my private keys. Do they take it from me? You know, these miners Getting out, keeping everyone's Bitcoin for themselves. Um, am I actually going to get some BT, you know, Bitcoin cash or not? Um, we'll see. It's not going to be a lot because it's like five bucks or something like that. But again, um, I think I said this last time I wrote the whole point of this, all of this is to be able to run your own code, do your own thing without anyone telling you what to do. It's supposed to be a permissionless system. And the only way to be a permissionless system is to allow for these forks and allow for people to go their own way and give them a do and say good luck to you and not um, attack their chain or um, petition exchanges not to list BTC or tell merchants not to do it or you're going to pull your Bitcoin or anything like that. And let people be and do their own thing. Um, you know, people talk about how they don't want the government to intruding in their business and telling them what to do with their money. Well, you, you can't go over and turn around and tell other people what to do with their money. And that's just, just fundamentally what I really feel about this whole thing. So let people be, let them do their own thing. If it fails, it fails. If it succeeds, good, good on them. Um, but just me personally, I'm just a little bit questioned about the, the code and whether or not this might be an attempt artificially government to have their own cryptocurrency without having to do all the work because they just fork Bitcoin and now a lot of them, the work that uh, eight and nine years of work has already been done for them build off of that and have some kind of a network effect. I, I think BTC will be integrated into the Chinese ecosystem before it comes out. And by the end of the year, I think that's going to come. You can see it uh, activate on digital WeChat and one of those apps there in China and that's significant increase in value. And then I you know, I kinda wanna question, is this a really a truly decentralized public currency or is this a government backed currency that might not have um, the decentralization that it used to have and less of a tax on top of the government, if you will. Um, might have a little bit more central planning involved and it's not only necessary but but again, these are just my thoughts. I'm a little rambling here, but this is going to happen on August 1st. We kind of know who the players are. More people are, are onboarding. We kind of know what it is. This, this is action. A lot of things in the show notes for you to read. I'm kind of just basically reiterating the same information because until August 1st happens and this gets out into the world, we really don't know what it is, what it looks like, what the network effect will be, who, how much hash and power. Who really are the changes are really the three corners of the wallets? This is no work at all. So that's it for this episode. Um, next episode, we're going to talk about just a little bit of the timeline of the segment. It'll be very short. And then we're going to just wrap everything up. 
Thank you for listening. Please rate and review either through iTunes or Stitchers or any of the podcasting apps that you're currently using to listen to this show. Thank you, and until next time. This has been a Herosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production.